would it not be great if you could compare and ask questions to your data? Now, there is something in Tableau which lets your audience interact directly with the visualization or dashboard to control aspects of their analysis. I'm talking about none other than Tableau sets. So when you select marks in your view, set actions can change the values in your set. Hi all, I welcome you to this session on sets in Tableau and it is designed with the intention to impart enough information to you to be able to start using Tableau sets in no time. So here's an outline of how this is going to go. We're going to start out by introducing you to Tableau sets. We're going to discuss what are sets in Tableau. Then we are going to move on to our Tableau desktop and see how we can create Tableau sets, followed by using them in a visualization. Then we are going to touch up on set actions, followed by learning how to combine sets in Tableau, and finally discuss a few applications of Tableau sets. So without much ado, let's get started. So what are sets in Tableau? So Tableau sets are basically custom fields which are used to hold the subset of data based on a given condition. In real time, you can create a set by selecting members from the list or from a visualization. You can also do the same by writing custom conditions or selecting top or bottom few records in a measure. So basically, a Tableau set is a field which holds certain parts of your data to which you can apply a certain condition. Simple? Now, there are two kinds of sets that you can create in Tableau. Number one is a dynamic set. Now, the members of a dynamic set change when the underlying data changes. It basically updates automatically. So, dynamic sets can only be based off of its single dimension. Now, apart from that, you also have your fixed sets. Now, the members of a fixed set do not change. A fixed set can be based on a single dimension or a multiple dimension. Since it is not going to update on its own, you can have multiple dependencies in this situation. Now that you know just enough to begin with sets in Tableau, let's move on to our Tableau desktop so you can understand how to use these things better. All right, so now in front of me, I have opened the Tableau desktop. This is the Tableau public workbook which is pretty much like your Tableau desktop, except for it's free. Now, I have already connected it to the sample Superstore, which you have access to if you have Tableau desktop or Tableau public desktop. So to create a dynamic set, which is the first one I'm going to create, I'm going to navigate to the data pane, which is here on the left hand side of your screen. And there I'm going to select a particular field. In my case, I'm choosing country or region. I'm going to right click on it go to create and it extends to a couple of options like calculated field, group, set and parameter. I'm going to select set. It's going to take a while. Now, in front of me and in front of you, those of you who are following, you will find something called the create set dialog box. This is the dialog box and how it looks like. Now you can basically configure your set. So you can configure your set using a few tabs. You can use the general tab, which we are on right now, to select one or more values that will be considered when you are computing the set. Alternatively, you can also select the use all option, which is right here at the bottom, to always consider all the members, even when new members are added or removed. So I'm going to go ahead and select all. Now we can move ahead to the condition tab. Here, we can define rules that determine what members to include in our set. For example, you might specify a condition that is based on the total sales that only includes categories with sales of over $100,000. So, I'm going to go to sales and then sum is already selected and let's say $100,000. Now, you need to understand that set conditions work the same as filter conditions. So, we can also make use of the top tab here. Now, this tab we are using to define the limits on what members to include in the set. So, for example, you might specify a limit that is based on the total sales that only includes the top five products based on their sales. So, again, I'm going to go select buy field. Select sales and by default it says top 10. 
let me go ahead and change it to top 5. Now when you're finished, you can go ahead and click OK. Now in the bottom here, you can see the new set is added. It's here at the bottom of the data pane under the set section. Now a set icon looks something like this, which is two intersecting bubbles. And now you've created a set. Now this was all about creating a dynamic set. What about fixed sets? So for that, we need a visualization. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to drag the measure profit up to columns. And I'm going to drag, say, sales to the rows. Then I'm going to go to profit ratio and bring that to the marks card. Add color. Then... Okay, now that we've created a visualization, we can select one or more marks. You can see all these orange and blue marks. We can select one or more of these marks or headers in the view. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select a couple of these marks, yes. And then I am going to right click on one of these marks and select to create set, which is the last option here. So here I can see my categories and my subcategories. There are 13 members in total. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add to filters shelf to automatically move the set to the filter shelf once it's created. And when finished, I can click on OK. Now optionally, what I could do is by default, the set includes all the members listed in the dialog box. So basically, I can go ahead and select the number of categories or subcategories that I can exclude. So when we exclude, the set will include all the members that I didn't select. You can also remove any dimensions that you don't want to be considered. So if suppose there is art, I don't want it to be considered, I'm going to just remove it. Binders, I'm going to remove and things like that. When you hover over it, you will definitely get this red cross or the remove option. Now also, if the marks that we've selected represent multiple dimensions, each member of the set will be a combination of those dimensions. So you can specify the character that separates the dimension values. And to do that, you can do so by separate members by here and enter the character of your choice. Like the example given here is furniture, comma chairs, which you can also see here. So when you've finished all of this, you can go ahead and click OK. And here you can see only the categories that you had selected. Now what you need to note is that if you created a set using specific data points, you can add more data to or subtract data from the set using the tooltip that appears. All you have to do is click the sets drop down icon and select the add or remove option. So basically, I hover on top of this spot. And then you see options such as keep only, exclude, and here is the sets icon. And then you can add to set 2 or remove from set 2. Yes? And after you create a set, you can see it at the bottom of the data pane of the set section like we saw for the previous one here. You can drag it into any visualization that you would like in any other field. So after you create a set, you can see it at the bottom of the data pane in the set section right here. And how you basically use it in a visualization is pretty simple. So here I can see the set. I can just drag it into the visualization and see it has worked. Or I can drag it to the filters. Then I can see the bubbles which are included in set 2. And when I remove it from the filters, I can see my original visualization again. If I select in and then keep only, you can only see the ones which are in set two. And if I select out, which are the ones in square, I can see only the bubbles out of set two. Basically, what I wanted to show is that when you drag a set to a visualization into Tableau Desktop, 
You can choose to show the members of the set or aggregate the members into in or out categories. In Tableau Server, one can only aggregate the members of the set into in or out categories. You can use set actions to give your audience more control over their analysis of your visualization. And that is the purpose of sets. With that, let's move on to something known as set actions. Now, what are set actions? Set actions basically take an existing set and update the values contained in that set based on a user's action in the visualization. So basically, as an author, you can use a set or multiple sets that you have already created to define the scope of a set action. You can use set actions to let your audience interact directly with your visualization, even your dashboard. It gives them more control over the aspects of their analysis. Now you can define the set action to include any of these. First, the source sheet or sheets it applies to, the user behavior that runs the action, basically how you hover, select, or menu, the target set, the data source, and the set that has to be used. And finally, what happens when the selection is cleared? Now, these are the four things that you can define the set action to include. With that, let's go back to our Tableau desktop to see how to create set actions. Now, to create a set action first, we are going to go to a worksheet, the option here up top, and select actions. For this, we can also use the keyboard shortcut, Control shift and A. Then you'll be met with this dialog box, which is the actions dialog box. Here, we are going to go ahead and click add action and then select change set values, which is the last option. Now, what you're going to do is that you're going to specify a meaningful name for the action in the add or edit section. So I'm going to name it set action demo. Now we're going to select a source sheet or a data source. The current sheet is selected by default. So here, sheet one is the one which is selected by default. If you can select a data source or a dashboard, you can select individual sheets in it. So I'm gonna go and select sample superstore and the one sheet I've made is the one sheet that has been selected. Then you can select how your users will run the action. You have three options as I had mentioned before. Hover, the first one, runs when a user hovers the mouse cursor over a mark in the view. Select runs when your user clicks a mark in the view and this option works well for set actions in my opinion. Finally, you have menu which runs when a user right clicks a selected mark in the view and then selects an option on the context menu. So I'm just going to select select because again, as I said, in my opinion, this works well for me. You can go ahead and select hover or menu depending on your choice. And as you keep using sets more and more in Tableau, you will definitely reach a point where you have favorites. Then you have to specify target set here by default. It is the sample superstore because that is the one that I've selected. Then I'm going to go ahead and select the set. So I'm going to select set one. Now the sets available in the target set lists are determined by the data source that you select and the sets that you have created in the workbook. Now these are the sets which are associated with that data source. In this example, I'm using set one, which was the first set that I created. Then you're gonna go ahead and specify what happens when the selection is cleared in the view. You can do it by clicking on any of these bubbles on the right. First one is keep set values, which basically makes the current values in the set remain in the set. Then you have add all values to the set, which adds all the possible values to the set. And finally, remove all the values from the set, which removes previously selected values from the set. I'm going to select keep set values and click on OK. This is going to save my changes and return to the view. After this point, you can test your set action by interacting with the visualization. You can tweak some of the settings for the action to adjust the behavior as needed. A few ways in which you can do it is by proportional brushing, asymmetrical drill downs, color scaling, relative dates, so on and so forth. Next, let's move on to how to combine sets. Now, combining sets allows you to answer complex questions and compare cohorts to your data. You can combine two sets to compare the members. And when you combine sets, you basically create a new set containing either the combination of all members, just the members that exist in both, 
or members that exist in one but not the other. One thing you need to understand is that to combine two sets, they must be based on the same dimension. This means you can combine a set containing top customers with another set containing top customers from last year. But you cannot combine top customer set with a top product set. Is that clear? So let's go back to our demo machine and let's create another set. So I'm going to duplicate this set and then probably edit that set. Now to combine these sets in the data pane under sets, we select the two sets that we want to combine. Now we're going to right click on the sets and select create combined set, which is the fourth option from the top. And now you will be met with this create set dialog box. So we are going to type a name. Let's name it combined set. Here we have verified the two sets, which is basically one duplicated the other. Now, basically, since one is a duplicate of the other, no matter what I share, it is going to be the same result. But still, let's select one of the options for how to combine sets. So the first one is all members in both sets, which basically enables the combined set to contain all the members from both the sets. Now, by default, that is the one that is selected. Then you have shared members in both sets, which is the intersection of both the sets. So it enables the combined set to only contain members that exist in both the sets. Now, both of these have an accept shared members option, which basically enables the combined set to contain all members from the specified set that don't exist in the other set. These options are equivalent to subtracting one set from the other. So I'm going to take one of these in random. Optionally, you can also specify a character that will separate the members if the sets represent multiple dimensions. Again, this block and when finished, you can click on OK. And here you can see the combined set in the sets pane. OK, with that, let's move on to the applications of Tableau sets. Now, there are many ways in which you can use sets to answer complex questions and compare cohorts of data. A few of these questions of yours I'm going to answer in my presentation. First, how do members of a set contribute to total? Now, you may have all kinds of questions surrounding how the members in a set contribute to the overall total. For example, what percentage of total sales come from repeat customers? You can answer these types of questions by using in or out mode for the set. Next, you can also answer how many members of a set exist in another set. This is another very common use of sets, basically to compare subsets of data of cohorts. If you wonder how many customers that purchased last year also purchased this year, or if a customer purchased a specific product, what other products did they buy? You can answer these types of questions by creating multiple sets and then combining them. You can also use hierarchical set filters to the selected members of all their descendants. Now they are unique to the multidimensional or cube data sources and are defined within the data source prior to connecting to Tableau Desktop. Now when you create sets in Tableau from a cube data source, descendants and any hierarchical structures are automatically included within the selected members. Sets are dynamic and useful elements for you to add interactivity and flexibility to your report. It is a versatile weapon in your arsenal and can be used very well in calculations and visualizations. With that, I close this session. My name is Upasana. Thank you and have a great day.